trashy pulp novels of the world have anything to offer? Are bestsellers all they're hyped up to be? The Terrible Book Club explores whether or not you really can judge a book by its cover or its ridiculous synopsis. If you've ever seen a book and thought, ugh, who's reading this? We probably are. Episode 14 of the Terrible Book Club. I'm Chris, and this is Paris. Hello. A very sleepy Paris. Oh, God. We've risen from the dead for this October spooky episode because we didn't do anything during September. (laughs) I'm a ghost. Okay, that was awful. (laughs) Why did did we just do that? Because it's October. (laughs) Actually, uh, okay. Actually, yeah, that's why we've been uh, off air for so long. Um, I'm a ghost now. Is why we've yeah, been off air for so long. Chris is dead. I died. Actually, <laughs> is what happened. Contrary yeah. to the status I posted on the Facebook, I actually did die. Yeah, Chris. Chris died. I'm no um, longer in of this corporeal world. It's really fun to be able to float through walls. It saves me a lot of time getting places. I don't have to like go around buildings or anything anymore. I just go straight through. Well, then how get you, where I need to go. Yeah, but how do you hold your guitar though? I have a ghost guitar. It died with me. <laughs> okay. I was buried with it, and then I rose out of the grave with my ghost guitar. Okay. I mean, there's there's other ghost things out there. Oh, well, I you know, don't know this. It's not noticed. just people. I mean, you've seen, like, ghost animals, right? Sure. Well, I certainly have now. Yes. Thank you, ghost <laughs> ghost friend. Um, anyway, Chris is not dead. Uh you ruined it. I was going to totally yeah, do because, this thing. Yeah, because everyone really thought you were a ghost just there. They were like, oh, yeah, that makes so much sense. Chris is obviously dead. People are very gullible. You would be surprised. No, I don't think our listeners are You know, it, like, people are so gullible that they might r- get a book published without, you know, realizing how terrible it is. <laughs> you know, that people t- people tell them, like, oh, hey, this is fine. This doesn't no, have to be no edited. One, no one tells them that. They're not. That's not a gullibility issue. I, that's I, that's a self awareness. I issue. think the author of the book we're about to explore here must have shown it to somebody. Oh yeah, you didn't even you didn't even say we read this week. Exactly, I wanted to build into it because we read Moon People, Part One, by Dale Courtney or Dave Courtney. I forget. Dale. It's Dale Courtney. Okay. Well, honestly, <laughs> with this book, I kind of don't like. Everything is so terrible in this one. Yeah, it's um. All right, so obviously we read terrible books, and that's what we do on this podcast. Um, this one, though, it was really, it was like I, I, a, a fifth grader who had struggled through all previous English grades wrote this, and it didn't get edited by his teacher. I was legitimately worried that we were making fun of a child again on this one, which I guess we kind of did with Maradonia that one no. time. But she no. was continuing to push it even into adulthood, which yeah. is why we let that kind of slide exactly. there. Um, I'm gonna. So yeah, what you what you find out about this dude? Because I I couldn't find anything. When I, I didn't. You know, I didn't do a whole lot of research. I didn't like deep dive or anything. I just needed to know how old this guy was when this was written. Um, I'm gonna read you his biography. That Perfect. Is on I guess like his Goodreads profile or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Somewhere, some somewhere. This is I, I'm reading this off a of blogger's post on like some website. But here you go. D. M. Courtney is married and a father of three. Oh wow! That's all you need to know, really. Yeah, like, that's that's scary. A enough. writer and also does work for National Security. What? On Are you serious? No. Foreign policies and war strategies. No. No. <laughs> We are fucking doomed. And world economic quality. What the fuck? Are you serious? My hobbies are scuba diving and fishing. I was raised in Miami, Florida at the time of the Muriel Flotilla of Refugees from Cuba 
in the early 70s. Also did a tour in the military, in the army, went to Korea for a year. I've always enjoyed writing about science fiction, and I hope you really enjoy my book, Moon People. Thank you, and may God bless your life. I don't believe it. There's no way that the person who wrote this writes strategies and reports for our federal government. There's no fucking way. There's absolutely a way. No, he's probably crazy and thinks he works for the government. I Like, you would be surprised no. who they let into government positions, Paris. And Dude. you would be surprised the quality of how people write in professional scenarios. I, I don't know, man. I write at work professionally all the time, and uh, it's pretty great compared to that. Oh, wow. Someone's very confident about Hey, that's the one thing I have confidence in, is my ability to write and edit. Just a scathing memo to someone in another department. You don't write Fucking a... Fucking great at that. You don't write a scathing memo? Sure. Memos go out to everyone. It could be... A, you could have a scathing memo to everyone, like, stop leaving fish in the fridge all the time to no. decompose, you smelly idiot, or something. I don't know. No. I've never been in an office, but... So. Yeah, apparently... I've literally never been in an office. Wow. Like, ever. Revelations. In my whole, like, well, no, I think I followed my brother into his work once. That sounds weird. But otherwise, I have (laughs) never been in an office. Great. Ever. Yeah, um, that's not how that works. Unless you're a fucking dick and you write shit like that. I've heard of people writing scathing memos before. That's I'm That's not... an asshole thing to do. You don't do that. Well, just because it doesn't happen in your job doesn't mean that other people don't do it. I suppose, but <laughs> what kind of unprofessional jerk would you be to do something like that? Um, lots of people are very unprofessional jerks, in <laughs> fact. That's true. Any, yeah, apparently, like this dude. Um, so this gentleman how... who is a father... Um, oh God! Responsible for children and apparently our national security. That's that's just penned unbelievable. this turd. <laughs> I have like I'm sorry. This one was was um, Chris. You gotta just read some. You just gotta read a paragraph. Just go anywhere, and I'll read it. Actually, if you want to, just flip to any I paragraph. Can read it. It's on my phone. Yeah. So. I, I, before I actually read anything, I want to say that th- like the reason I was concerned that this was a child. Was just because, like... It's super short, also. Well, it's short, and the way it's written is in this sort of, like... Childlike cadence, It's like a stream of consciousness thing where a child is telling you a story. It's like, and then they came from the moon, and then there was the aliens, and the UFO came from around the thing. And then he got a job over here, and then this happened. By the way, it's now later in the day, and then... Yeah, yeah, no, that is a very apt description of what's going on. That is exactly how it's written. Which is why it was mind-blowing to find out that an adult wrote this and also to find out that that adult works in some way um with our federal government and uh has a hand in national security that's honestly frightening um i i oh god oh and this was uh ridiculously expensive it was like eight dollars or something nine nine dollars that's the only way you could get it too yeah is to just give this man nine dollars yeah and i was super pissed about it because i mean i was pissed when i did i was like oh <laughs> fuck i don't want to because we always try to we try to get books used or get them free on kindle or whatever just so we're not just so we're not contributing money to these these fucking sad excuses of, of humanity here i uh, not to interrupt you but i have to say i can't I've, talk by the way i'm just fucking tired i've Sorry. come back from this hiatus a changed person I've wow. learned things, and I've, I'm just I'm just sick of this crap now, Paris. I can't stand these people that write these things, and I have to read them for this now. And you know what? My time is valuable. Yeah, dude. So I'm just gonna be scathing towards everyone and relentless at this point because. Oh wow! Look at you, the voice of reason. I'm try. Look, I'm, choked out. I'm I'm trying to be like step it up my game on this podcast. Now we came back from a month. I went. On a journey, I learned some things. I, I, you know, I know kung fu now. No, um, no, I'm a ghost kung fu practitioner. Oh my god! No, I, I'm, I'm Batman now. Actually, is what no. happened. I went. No. I did the thing where Bruce Wayne went to like his ninja training thing in the movies, and now I can totally like do Batman stuff. You mean Razogul? Yeah. What? No, that was like a ninja training thing, though. He he was in charge of a bunch of ninjas. Were they ninjas? I yes. I thought it was a different type of uh, martial art. They were totally dressed like there was like wrapped around the head with the fucking Tonto swords or whatever. Eh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Un- but anyway, I know that shit now and I'm going to use it to fucking no, okay. eradicate. No, just 
no, just read the just read the paragraph. Oh, just wait. anything. He's just gonna flip anywhere in this fucking. Let's book. just start at the beginning here. No, no, no. Plenty of other people have done that. Pick something else. <sighs> now I have to flip through. All right. They pay workers a lot of money to work on the base station, and he would be an officer if he did decide to join the USS Lunar Base One. First, it starts on its mission to Mars for six months. Then, off to Saturn's moon Titan, the USS Lunar Base Two will first go to Venus for a year. Then it will head to Pluto and its moons. USS Lunar Base Three will go first to Jupiter for a year and then go to the outer parts of our solar system and beyond. They are also paying big money to either go to our moon base and our Mars base to work for a 10-year period. Now, on this day, David is on his way to the restaurant, like always listening to his radio. Video. His favorite song is playing when there's an interruption in the broadcast on the emergency broadcast system. Fuck this book. And in the background, <laughs> you can softly hear me loading a gun and yeah. <laughs> bringing it to my I, temple. I like this one. Is, I, it sounds like a child wrote it. And apparently, yeah. again, this is a grown man. Yeah, I read most of this. Um, I read it all on my phone, actually, because it's so short. That was the other. I mean, you know, both both a, a wondrous thing and a terrible thing. Um was this this book's brevity i wouldn't even call it a book honestly it's it's novella. So, no it, it's so sh- chris this thing it's about 100 pages it's, it's a novella no it's not yes, 100 it pages not real pages if that was on an actual book page like a standard Might be type more like 60 75 that's still no, a novella no it's it's on i'm not even kidding you it's like 30 to 40 pages it's not even – it's like a short story. I don't think it's that short. Yeah, it is because on my phone, um, on my tiny phone screen with like pretty decently sized font, so you, you're only getting like a paragraph to two paragraphs on the screen at a time, it was only like 80 pages or something. Yeah, that's novella length, I would say. Fuck this. <laughs> this is awful. The fact that he charged $9 for this should be a crime. It should be a crime. The book police should come. That's the that's our new job, come. actually. We're now We're the, the book, book police. police. We're going to come and arrest you and <laughs> throw away your typewriters and computers and cut off uh, your hands. I don't think anyone's writing on a typewriter, Chris. The keyboard. I don't know. But I am I am all for the, um, you know, slicing off of hands. Drastic measures are being taken. Yeah. We've come back from this hiatus relentless. Bloodthirsty. And bloodthirsty. Relentless. And, and, uh, We're not to be messed with yeah. any longer. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, so right. how about we start talking about the plot in this book? Yeah, it's le- it's less plot, more just things that are described in, there in is paragraph form. There is absolutely no conflict until maybe literally the last 1% of the book. Where there is literally a the, space war. The, well, yeah, but... Or a space battle. A brief space battle. Yeah, very brief and uh, kind of like weird. you don't feel tense. At, this... <sighs> Just there's nothing here to like yeah. be tense about or like oh what's gonna how the what's the character gonna do the book starts with uh, our main character David Bramer oh right dude I couldn't remember anyone's name you read it quite a I bit read it, ago. yeah I read it like a month ago so I thought it was a little bit shorter but whatever right? and I've finally managed to get it on no, my no it was it was that long ago because I remember um, I read most of it when I was. Uh... When I was at Paul's house one day. Oh, okay. And he was at work, and I was just like, I'm going to read all this. And I was sitting there, like, laughing to myself and kind of feeling like I needed to cry because I was reading this. Can I say another thing about this book is that it does a thing that I've only ever seen in one of the book, and that was uh, Blindness by Jose Saramago, which is a great book. And he kind of used it effectively, or at least I was kind of fine with it. In there's no quotation marks anywhere. People saying stuff is just like the sentence is just there. There's like no oh, I quotes hate to that. separate that. I hate that. It, it's used in this book. It, oh, horribly. It, it's kind of hilarious in this book because at first he's like, Dave said this or like blah, 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 Dave said. Eventually he just gives up on this yep. and switches to just putting the name of the person who's speaking in parentheses. But I couldn't tell if, gets so if the person that was supposed to be talking was like, after like it was yeah, at the fantasies after the wor- the yeah. things that were said or before it was like a very confu like a very poorly laid out script where it was just the person's name and then the text but i couldn't tell if the where who was really doing anything yeah it was like some fucking film student got really excited about a dialogue and he just started writing a rough draft and that's that's kind of what it's like the, um but i think your I description would... of it of it being 
basically a transcript of a child telling a story, like a five-year-old running through a park and saying, oh, and then the squirrel ran over here and then it saw another squirrel and they went up the tree together, but then the tree was brown and then the squirrels came down <laughs> yeah, and they like ran around the tree. just like mad irrelevant details. Yeah. At some point, he just like mentions this dude going home for lunch. And, like, making a sandwich. It's, like, two sentences. Yeah, but it's just yeah. really fucking irrelevant. And then that... he ate a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which was his favorite. Because, like, oh, there's, okay. like, little focused moments like that. And then later on, it'll be, like, a whole day passes somehow in the middle of a conversation. All right, this dude gets yeah, offered it's... a job at NASA out of the blue. Oh, because he's... Directly a... up into his butt. Because like... he's a brilliant high school teacher? But he's, like, a professor? A high school. This is another. They call thing. him professor. Yeah, but he's a high school teacher. But he's a high school teacher. This happened in uh, Maradonia, didn't it? I think so. Yeah, yeah there was a didn't. professor. I don't. What, maybe professor like, high school. Professor. Yeah, professor. Mister. Professor. Um. Oh, so, and he's he's like a brilliant astronomer, and he has this magical. Okay, here's computer. the thing. The book starts with, like, there's a meteor in the sky. It's also the future, by the way. It's, like, 2048 or something. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a Ran- meteor. Like, completely randomly 2048 because there's nothing very futuristic yeah, about I this, I suppose. There's, like, a meteor on a trajectory. Um, it's supposedly a meteor on a trajectory yeah. with the Earth. And, like, NASA is calculating how it's going to – if it's going to hit or not. By the way, NASA knows if meteors are going to hit us, like, from – Light years away. There's already like a catalog of stuff where they're like, this one might hit us in like 40 years, but probably not. They kind of did the math already. Yeah. So the fact that like at the start of this book that NASA has to like wait a week to like it, do yeah, the calculations does not make any sense. doesn't make any sense, especially since later on we find out David has a, like a fucking Siri telescope in his classroom yeah, that he's just like, he calls so it Zeus weird. and he's like, hey Zeus, calculate the trajectory of that meteor, and it's like, yeah, bro, that shit's definitely gonna hit Earth. So why would the high school teacher have a telescope computer that can do calculations, but NASA doesn't, and they need him to come in? Yep. By the way, this yep. doesn't even matter because the job that he takes for, like, head of some bullshit, yeah, he immediately – he gets offered another job, like – 40 minutes yeah, later. Yeah, he gets a promotion like 40 minutes There's one later. chapter called The New Job, and then the next chapter is called The Job Offer. Wait, the chapters were titled? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah. I don't even remember that. It's literally like he shows up to work the first day, <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, like yeah, 40 minutes right. later, the guy that offered him the job in the first place is like, well, actually, since we don't know about this meter anymore, why don't you just go up in this lunar base we have for reasons oh we, and it's a three-part magically separating lunar base that's actually three individual ships that's conceivable i mean that's not totally out of the realm of possibility I feel um like. the way they describe it it doesn't seem i like don't even really real. understand he, like he says it's like one kilometer long and two kilometers in diameter and has like a bunch of shit and it's like i don't think that's enough room no, for everything it, in a spaceship it wasn't. yeah he, he was saying that it was basically only I don't know. There's hospitals and, like, gardens and farms and, like, stores and yeah, movie theaters in only Yeah, in only, like, a mile of space. That doesn't really make well, a lot Well, like, sense. Uh, it's, what, it's like a mile by two miles, so how do you measure, like, a cylinder's volume, right? It's, like, base times height. Oh, that's right. It is a cylinder. I forgot about so, that. So, like, a mile times two miles Q. I, you know what? I haven't done this math in such a long fucking time. Math is uh, not my... Yeah, the um, volume It, it of would have, cylinder. like, a lot of volume within it. And, like, you know, a, you can fit... A hospital is only, like, a thousand feet across and, like, so tall or whatever. So you could fit probably... Because keep in mind, it's not like it's just running flat along the thing. It's probably, like, a bunch of stuff in a circle. Um, It's the... Oh, that's right. Yeah, you take... You get the... um. The so you uh, volume have... of the circle times the height of the cylinder. Yeah, but like I'm saying, like it wouldn't just be like a flat or the thing area. And... I'm sorry, the area of the circle. You wouldn't right. have like just like a flat thing with all the things on it, and then like just air above you. It would just you'd be like to look to above you, and you would see other buildings above you. Is that how? He That's how it space out? stations work, or supposed space what? stations. People have already built models for working space stations like yeah. this. And the way it works is that you have, like, the ground over here, and then, like, it keeps going around like that, and there's ground above you, too, that other people are walking. It's, like, kind of like an inverted Wait, sphere. Wait, what? Yeah. How does that work? You get artificial gravity by the spin. The spin keeps you on. Oh. Oh, right. It would just be like Earth. Yeah, but, like, okay. an inverse Earth. Inverse Earth, right. That's all. 
So th- that's legitimate. That's a thing that can happen. It hasn't been built yet, but sorry, it, I'm like I'm half awake, so I'm saying stupid. It shit It seems and like not the, the, the so terrible books. The more worse the book is, the sleepier you are when we do it. The more worse. Wow, I didn't, haven't even said anything like that. Well, you know what? The worse the book is. I, I don't no, care I'm about just, proper English I'm, anymore. After I'm just this tired book. because I, you know, I had a long day at work and I didn't sleep a lot the night before, so I'm tired. Anyway, back to the plot. No, the events that are described by a five-year-old running through a park in the book. That's what it sounds like. This dude gets a second job offer, like, the first day to go up into the space station for I don't know what reasons. I don't know. They were like, oh, we're sending this They're not observing the meteor or anything. No, they were like, oh, we're sending this to Venus, and you're going to be up there for ten years, so it's a huge commitment. Take a couple days to think about it. Uh, Oh, let's talk about the date and sex scene. Okay. Oh, my God. All right. So at the beginning of the book, it's like... You know, for someone that's married and has three kids, I don't know how he couldn't describe I don't think this man has ever touched a woman, and I'm not sure where those three children came from. (laughs) Yeah, dude. It's (laughs) it's a mystery. Like, I want to talk to this dude's wife. Can we get her on the show? You know what? I don't think we have enough clout. Mrs. Courtney, I need you. I need to know. Wait, there was characters named Courtney with the last name Courtney in the book. They were probably his kids. Oh, you're... Oh, my God. (laughs) Wait, but what isn't one of them, like, the girl that it seems like he might, like, end up banging in the space station? No, she just, like, showed him around a little bit. Yeah, but this is only part one. They're setting it up so that he has this I did not feel later. any romantic tension at all with... No, I mean, I didn't feel it, but that's just the obvious shit that's gonna happen. I, I, I don't... Well, if it might be his daughter or something now, or... Oh, God, I... Oh, no, I... Oh, no, I hope not. Because there was definitely two people that were brother and sister named... With the last name Courtney oh, on the space right. station at yeah, the end. Yeah, I had forgotten about that. That's I just like had that revelation too. So we both just had our minds blown by <laughs> Moon People. Uh, wait, why is he even called Moon People? Those people aren't even from the Moon. Okay, we'll get to oh, that. Oh God, I just remember. <laughs> Jesus fucking They're Christ. They're not from any Moon at all. Uh, anyway, let's try to get through the events here. So it, the, it, earlier in the book, it describes like how he like David g- likes to go to breakfast at this diner or something because oh, yeah. he has a buddy over there. Her name <sighs> is Sorry. Cheryl C H E R A L Cheryl, which, which looks more like Carol to me, but whatever. Yeah, I'll let it slide. There's he, already he also kept using the wrong gendered pronoun for her, but she kept calling her he at the beginning, and then eventually oh, he did? it was she. Yeah, it was. I think it was just a typo, but it happened a couple of times, and I was like, it's "I'm like, eh, who cares? I'm gonna keep writing. This is great stuff. I gotta yeah. edit later." And then he didn't edit. Anyway, so it, like he goes to this diner to hang out with this lady sometimes. And he always has breakfast over there. So like the couple of days before he goes up on the space station, he like actually nuts up and asks her out or something. Mm-hmm. And like they like go on this date where they eat food on a bench or something which is fine totally fine date i've done dates like that before i don't know they no they they ate and then they sat in a car and then they had sex but they go back to his room and it's just like and then they made love through the night and then they woke up in the morning and made love even more Uh, yeah it was there was like a little bit of like a nervy first kiss thing but it like the way this book moves through stuff it's just like one sentence is like they're kissing and then the next sentence full penetration yeah it's quicker than Midnight Sins was, even, just from... What are you talking about? Midnight Sins took forever to describe sex. That's what I mean. This book, it's like from it's first kiss to, to immediate dicking in like... Yeah, but you don't even... I, I was like, wait, they're it's having not, sex. Oh, yeah, it's, it's not laid out. What? It's just like, and then they made love. Yeah, through the night. It's very glossed over. That's literally what it says. Chris is not exaggerating. It says made love. That's how he talks about it. I just hate it. Those, that, those two words. I, ugh. Yeah. It, sex can be a very emotional thing, and it's great when it is, and blah, blah, but just, uh, it's, ugh, it's, ugh, ugh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't really accurately describe what's happening. While I, <laughs> it just doesn't. While I think that. It just doesn't get the effect across of what exactly is happening. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, while you know, while I think that, you know, with certain people or at certain times or whatever, sure you can. Feel but a love waitress that, that you just but... like you. Well, I guess you've known her for a while, but mm-hmm. you just you just started this and you're going on a space station for a decade or something. So it's more of a hookup. Let's be honest. No, didn't he not? Wait, did he not know at that point? No, he did because no, it was did. like the yeah, day you're before right. you're where right. he was like, "I gotta go to the space station." Better fuck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Which uh, reasonable fucking yeah. you know yeah. thing? Like, if I was in that situation, obviously I would too. But anyway, so he's done making love. Although he wakes up in the morning, they made love some more, <sighs> and then he goes up on like the in the shuttle. Oh, God, sorry. 
to like go up on this space station mm-hmm. and that's pretty uneventful there's like there's like a whole countdown sequence that literally just goes it in the book it's like 10 9 8 7 6 but there's like no commas it's just the numbers 10 <laughs> through 1 in a row and then lift off oh, and there's yeah. also like a badly compressed and squished picture of a space shuttle Wait, what? Taking... yeah there's like pictures in this book don't you remember no there's pictures I in this book there's two pictures. pictures there's a badly squished and compressed picture of a space shuttle <laughs> and then one of the death star from star wars i'm so glad that i didn't see these pictures i definitely had pictures in my copy my. that you loaned to me and it's a, like a badly squeezed and comp- like it's like he That's wrote this weird. in an MS Word file and he put a picture in and yeah. didn't like restretch it at all no, to like fit the format. Wait, there's so- a Death Star. Well, yeah, maybe my phone. That's didn't why I laughed so properly. hard later on. I anyway- was wondering why you messaged me with Death Star. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, because there's a picture of the fucking Death Star. Oh, it is because he just couldn't come up with anything else oh. to like. That's what a space station looks like. Oh. Anyway, so he goes up on the space station and he's shown around by Heather Courtney. That's one of the yeah, Courtney's right. in this yep. thing. Courtney. And she's like, we got all this stuff and it's got a hospital and we're going to go to Venus eventually. And there's an Admiral Benson or something mm-hmm. who's Nerve, like the head yeah. of the ship or whatever. Um, and then like the meteor that they had been tracking down on Earth like pops up again because it like weirdly flashed out of existence and came back in. Like on the same trajectory, so they're like, that must not be a rock. Like, no fucking shit, Sherlock. This thing that disappears out of it and just comes up like light years ahead of where it was in like the space of a day. Probably not a fucking rock. And also, not to mention, don't we we have the technology to see that from Earth? Especially if it's, you know, 40 years in the future. Pretty sure we can. Uh, What do you mean? Like, see if it's a rock or a UFO? Yeah. I mean, you can't. I mean, that's so far. You can tell that something is moving. You can't tell what it is. Like when people, when they look at planets far yeah, in the solar it, system, isn't it supposed to be like super close? It was like a hundred light years, like thousands of light years away oh, at a point. Okay, and then it comes super close. Oh, you're right. This is basically the next event that happens after the dude gets shown around a little bit. Is that this thing flashes back into existence and his old. He's like old. I'm saying old coworker. Like he was down there for more than a fucking day with this yeah. guy. <laughs> Anyway, this dude calls him up. He's like, that thing's back. You told me I should tell you when it's back. And it's like right behind a moon from Pluto. It's just chilling there, hiding. Wait, from Pluto? Yeah, it hid behind a, a moon from Pluto or something. Or it was it acted like it was a moon from Pluto for a second. No, no I think it was a... It had to be the Earth's moon because how the hell could they get to Pluto? They were already way far away. And there's a line... That, okay, there's aliens on this fucking ship. Spoiler alert. They come in at the thing and they're like, we were hiding at the edges of your solar system because we found oh, that whenever yeah. we go right up on the planet, that's the home base for people. people. It scares people. So we pretended to be a moon just now. Like, it, like they, everyone on Earth saw them as not a moon, pretty much, as soon as they came into the solar system. But they were like... Hundreds of thousands of light years away, and that's when they were tracked as the meteor from the start of the book that was on a collision. By the way, it wasn't as if the meteor was on a collision course with Earth. It was on a collision course with the sun. What? Yes. It wasn't on a collision course with the Earth. It was on a collision course with the sun. I don't remember that. That's definitely what happened. I read this book three days ago. I I trust you. You're very sleepy. Yeah, obviously. Trust me on this one. It was on a collision course. I I do. I just can't remember. With the sun, which shouldn't be an issue even for like a giant meteor because that shit would just burn it up. This isn't fucking the supernova attack from the final battle in in Final Fantasy VII, which actually did have that happen where a giant meteor blew through our solar system and hit the sun and for some reason that expanded the sun and like destroyed everything which is not how that would work at all i don't understand anything about final fantasy okay well it it sounded like this dude saw that from that game and thought like that's how you could destroy our solar system is by throwing a big enough meteor into the sun that that would make the sun explode no because the sun will it'll just burn it it will definitely disrupt the sun a little bit but i'm not sure how much probably not by much the sun is the hottest fucking thing. It's like, also pretty big, so like a ten yeah. kilometers. Th- it would it would cause some kind of weirdness with the I sun. I don't think it would. But it would. It, it maybe like a magnetic fucking burst or something like that, or like because solar flares do that. So yeah, it might, but... like if you like drop like a big rock in a f- pool of fire, I don't know, dude. It might still any... splash weirdly. Yo, if any of you are astronauts, fucking astrophysicist buzz aldrin listens to our yeah, podcast dude, neil armstrong listens astronomers to, is he even alive well from the i'm a ghost still so i talk to <sighs> neil armstrong 
and he said that that's not how that works. Okay, well, if any of you have any working knowledge of uh, planetary bodies, the solar system, how space science works, please, please contact us and tell us how. Uh, if crazy I throw this is. a rock at a fireball, will it make the fireball go super big and just, or would, no. would it snuff the fireball out? I'm pretty sure not. But... Especially if the fireball is like 10 million times the oh, size of God. the rock. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, moving on. So turns that, out it's fucking aliens. Oh yeah. Uh, and I forget what they're called. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they they have really stupid names. I they're just the remember. Paulines. The Paulines. Yes. And they're from uh, they're 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 moon shit, but they're not from the moon. They're no. from like the Andromeda galaxy or something. Yeah, I, I, don't I don't even know, know what the, exactly what they what are. That is, but yeah, they're from some of the galaxy. They're like uh, yeah, well, no, they're in like some constellation somewhere. Yeah. That's close to us or something. I forget if it was like Sagittarius or Orion or something. Yeah, I think, like, I think you're right. We're from like the second star on the, like the dick of this this constellation yeah. or something. We're like the very tip of the dick or something. Yeah. And we like we have many traders. They're like the nicest aliens in the world. Yeah, and they learned nice. English by watching TV. Yeah, they said that they got TV like 50 Which, Earth years look, ago. Look, man, I got to say something here. If aliens exist in the universe, they would be so fucking different from yeah. our yeah. like biological way that we are that even like basic anything would be so different like speaking they might not even speak they might just gurgle a little bit like in a complex oh, way oh yeah i mean i mean who knows they, like life forms are very so drastic it could be an intelligent gas that just chokes yeah. you to death and like steals your fucking moisture or something it could be all kinds of crazy shit, but of course they're just humanoid. They're just like slightly taller and green yeah. and like have greasy looking hair or something. I forget what the fuck they look yeah, like I don't because know. he doesn't really even bother describing them as like kind of – the only thing I remember is sort of tall and lanky. Yeah, that's what I remember too and I think they were gray or green as all They're the watching like are. all these broadcasts or whatever. Like they, uh, how would they pick up the language that quickly? How is their language – how do you even – Well, you know what? <laughs> yeah, these are all great questions. Um, the answer to all of them is this author was unimaginative and a fucking moron. So let's just move on and, uh, talk more well, you know, we're only half an hour in here and we're basically 80% of the way through the book. So I'm trying to stretch some shit out. You know what? I'm fucking tired. This book was a waste of money, a waste of my life. Isn't isn't this whole podcast that? No, because (laughs) sometimes we have really good moments and, uh, sometimes, you know, we, we get, get some interesting topics uh oh my god i can't i can't talk sometimes we have some really hilarious moments we talk about really interesting topics um this though just garbage just garbage this is just sci-fi garbage like i don't it, 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 there's it's nothing. barely sci-fi yeah 80 percent of the book is this guy got a job and went up on a space station yeah. that's it that's totally real now that's like science facts at this point i mean the only really good point that you the only good point you you brought up so far is yeah the um the existence of other life forms and how uh they would probably not be anthropomorphic and like all humanoid and i have always had this thought i was like imagine you're an alien species and you're like you actually are observing the earth or something imagine just picking up like a human porn video you somehow, already talked right? about this on i did before. i mentioned it but now it's like super relevant yeah, for that's this true. because like um, imagine you're just this alien species watching these fucking weird colored like hairless and things just slapping together like a couple of fucking meat sticks yeah. that just, it probably looks awful from yeah, the perspective of not if, being human if you're just like a conscious gas <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're probably you're like, what the you're just probably like what the fuck is yeah, that yeah what is happening yeah, that let's would... never go here yeah that looks awful yeah it looks like they want to hurt each other all the time that one's screaming by the way all <laughs> 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 oh. oh, you got me. Oh, oh you, you got me, Paris. I try. <laughs> Even in my I can't tell if they're conscious harming state. each other or like I uh, I've learned that word is the affirmative in their language, but it seems like she's in distress. Yeah. Oh, God, they have they have these wonderful corporeal forms and what do they do with them? <laughs> Ruin them. <laughs> also, I the, mean, the, the, is that even supposed to go there? <laughs> <laughs> oh god 
also the aliens are like, oh, <laughs> we came over in a time of relative like peacefulness over like we waited for when oh, it was Oh yeah, peaceful. we waited until all the wars stopped. And I guess it's in the future, but like come on, that shit didn't stop. No. That that's a fundamental aspect of humanity that we're gonna Maybe, fight. A well this bit. dude works in like war strategy maybe he was like mm, perhaps if i write this into my book they will think it will actually happen because i'm so good at preventing war what well because he <laughs> worked <laughs> you know what like you're so tired and he's so dumb that i think that might be like a real reason as to like you know what this guy can't be that dumb if he like has a job See, something worked out somewhere and he got a lady no, Chris, to make love to him, right? Chris, my theory is that his biography is a lie. That's the only thing that makes sense. There's no way you could write something like this with all these obvious errors and crazy sense structure if you truly have a job in national security at you, federal level. You're, I, I don't agree with you here, but... And again, he probably does have the wife and kids. I don't know if I believe that either. Come on, man. You don't have to be smart to get a wife. Or a, a spouse, rather. No, but... He doesn't describe sex. That's weird. Maybe because he's Christian, he just glosses oh, over it. Oh, you're right. He is Christian. He mentioned God bless you at the end there. So he's probably just... Like, he acknowledges that it's like a thing that's a connection between humans. By the way, they had totally had premarital sex right there. So yeah, I don't know did. what that's kind of a Catholic true. he is, but... He, he didn't say he was Catholic. He said he was Christian. No, he just said, may God bless you all. Oh, you're which right. Which could be anything. Which could, yeah, that could be anything. He could have his own weird God idea of like, it, you know. Maybe he worships the, um, aliens. Nowlings. The ancient aliens that came. The, and what are they? Prowlings? Prawns? Prowlings. Prawns? Oh, God. Yeah, the prawns. That's <laughs> District 9 that you're thinking of. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? What is that? What? The District 9? Yeah. It's a movie. You never seen District 9? No. You should watch it. It's a pretty good sci-fi movie. It's, Wait, it's way better shrimp? than this shit. Yeah, well, the aliens kind of look crustacean-y. Oh, ew. So they call them prawns. It's, like, it's, it's actually this movie about like if alien refugees came to Earth and humanity would be like mad racist towards them and like put them and confine yep. them. Basically, aliens sure get would. confined to like a camp in South America. Yep. And like they're just watched over and like quarantined and treated like trash because they're, Sounds about right. they're refugee aliens. Wait, so w did then all the humans bump up human refugees to like a higher status or did we just treat everyone like garbage? I guess there are a slightly higher status, but like the alien refugees are like totally garbage oh, yeah. things that I mean, like people just hate and they're mad racist towards. Yeah. That's basically the plot of District 9. Oh, interesting. You should really watch it. It's like that one that director's like one good movie. What director? I forget. <laughs> but that guy did that one movie. It was pretty good. Eh. Anyway, the Powlings aren't the only alien race in the area, it turns out. They've been warring with these two other alien races. Uh, the Archons and the Thracians, which, by the way, are definitely Thracians, named... Thracians, you mean? What, I think they're Thracians. Thracians. The, like, I from Thrace. Whatever. But yeah. these are names that I've definitely heard before in some other yes. sci-fi context as aliens. So yeah. he didn't even, like, I think the Paulines are original, but everything else he, like, ripped off from somewhere. I'm just going to call them the shrimps. Call them the shrimps. They're, not, I, they're just tall people. They're not they're even. The shrimps, that shrimp is actually very in, inapt because, like, shrimp implies. Did you say a, inapt? I don't, you know what I'm trying to say. Yep. Yeah, God. I don't have time to think up proper words when I'm trying to speak Dude, here. I am not even a fully functional person right now, and I caught that. Well. I'm going to speak how tell I want to speak. About, tell me more about the shrimps. They're, they're not shrimps because a shrimp is a small person, right? They're tall people. I, for people. one, welcome our new shrimp overlords. They're tall people. You can't call them shrimps because a shrimp is a tiny, weak person. That's how you, you call someone a shrimp. Look at how unamused I am. <laughs> You're never amused by me. It's okay. <laughs> Anyway, wah, wah. all right, moving on. Anyway, um, the like, the Paulines are like, oh, the Archons and the Thracians. I'll... Thra th Thracians. Your proper pronunciation of an alien species. No, that, that, that's not an alien term. What, what do you mean? Thrace was a place. It's a city. I don't think he named them after like a Greek city. Unless, unless it was, unless um. What was I going to say? Uh, 
Unless I don't remember the spelling correctly from the book, which is very possible because I read it like over a month ago. I'm gonna or check more. right now. By the way, um, I want to mention that the name of the 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 space station that the Palides are from is the Galumpa. Oh my god, that's right. <laughs> Their ship is the Galumpa. So I just thought of it as a giant floating pierogi the whole time. A that... is not a pierogi. I know. Paris. I know. But the word galumpa just made me think of a pierogi, and so it's just a giant. Why would it make you think dump. of a galumpki, which it actually does look like the spelling for that in Polish? Oh no, it makes you think of a pierogi. That you're mixing up your Polish cuisine terror. No, the word galumpa just makes me think of a potatoey lump. I don't know. That's just it's actually brain. a stuffed cabbage. No, a galumpki is. Yeah, but well, that's. You, you spell it in Polish with G A weird L. That's actually a W U M P. It's like almost the exact oh, spelling. Oh, weird. Okay. Which is why I'm saying that. So it's kind of interesting that you had a Polish cuisine like. Yeah. I think you were maybe remembering what Gwumki was spelled like. I don't like, know. But and... yeah, the Thracians were, I mean, not a city. They were like a, God, they were, I think, a nomadic people or something. Yeah, anyway, they were, they were people in the saw... ancient world. And I think yeah, you... Thracians, you're right. Yeah. T-H-R-A-C-I-A-N-S, which I, yeah. I guess, it, fine, I'll take your word for it on this one. <sighs> But anyway, so what happens, the, the conflict in the book is that, oh, spo- oh shit, the Archons and the Thracians show up to fight the fucking um, Paulines a little bit on their, I guess, Death Star, which doesn't ha- like, has yeah, a non-Death know. Star laser or something. And then, like, the humans help out a little bit, and then they, the two alien races run away. The The end. Ta-da. Literally the end right there. But that's only part one, Chris. There's part two and three. I'm not paying another nine. Oh, I'm not either. That 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 this guy can fuck right off. <laughs> That's it. That's the little bit of conflict, and it was like barely a page of anything. So there's no tension. Most of this book is this dude got a job, and then he got another job, and then he went up into space, and he got shown around the space station, he and then he aliens. met some aliens that weren't even moon people. Dude, the aliens are so considerate, though. They're they're very polite aliens. And, uh, oh yeah, and the humans were like, oh man. Maybe they're like vegetarians. They like they share like, food. There's like a weird dinner we, date yeah, that they, they have. have a dinner date. Yeah, they have a dinner date. Like, why would you assume at all that a these they, I, there's no spacesuits or anything on these aliens? They just walk into the atmosphere of the space station. Yeah, like, I like guess we all breathe the same shit. Yeah. I guess we all eat the same stuff. I guess we all have the same bacteria. So there's not like a horrible fucking. Oh, that's right. Yeah, didn't they? Uh, they were. Uh... They really liked the mashed potatoes or something, and they were like, oh, yes, we have a dish that is very similar. It's called, I don't know, something. I don't know, but yeah. Pavepki or yeah, something. who uh, knows? They're Polish. Yeah, they're <laughs> Polish <laughs> aliens. The thing. They're, they're, they're just Polish. This guy we're, just... We're in a Polish. giant flying gwumki through the stars. <laughs> yep. Yep. Handing out pierogi recipes to yes. everyone in the galaxy. Yep. Battling the Thracians. That's to- I would totally be a Polish alien that just handed out Gwumki and pierogi recipes everywhere. Isn't isn't that what... Maybe some kapusta. And what you are, though. Polish alien? Yeah. I'm a citizen of the United States, so... That's true. You're also a citizen of Poland. Yes, true. But uh, uh, that would be pretty awesome. But yeah, that's like they have this weird dinner date that happens, I guess. Yeah. And, and like they just eat each other's food... And yep. breathe each other's air and like shake each other's hands and this is all fine. There's no quarantine, yep. anything happening. Nope. You think maybe the national security guy would have like something to, of knowledge oh, about that? Oh, and there's that. no females. Oh yeah, there's, I don't think they, they mention a female. They never describe alien. any sort of sexual dimorphism. Well, that's come on. If, if it's an alien, it doesn't have to be right. It could totally no, be. No, but the, everything else is humanoid. Everything else, you know, like you just said, they're eating all the same food and drinking sure, all the same Sure, but maybe stuff and... the aliens are like Barbie dolls and they just like have, it's just smooth down there and they just, I don't know, like you cut off a finger and a new one grows. They, no, they don't, don't really bring it up. It could be anything. That's what I mean. It's this, there's not even any content in this book. There's no description. Yeah. I don't know what any of these people look like. There's literally no descriptions of what any people look like. I think at some point there's like some brunette hair described for the waitress or something. Great. Great, brilliant. Maybe, like, but like, a thing that I was thinking about when I was like, this the reason this sounds like a child is because of all the irrelevant details that are thrown yeah, in. Yeah, but none of the actual details. But I want to <laughs> talk about this. Like, when you're setting the scene oh, in the book, I guess people that don't know anything about writing just know that you're supposed to describe something. So they'll throw in like really irrelevant descriptions. Where I always thought of like a, a point of view narrative in a book. It's like when you're walking around in real life, you notice some details and things, but you don't notice everything. No. But what you do notice is sort of 
indicative of the type of personality you are and like what you, what you as a person would notice would help you understand the character more hey, maybe here, here's my here's my biggest criticism how about you tell me what the main character looks like instead of what his sandwich is how about that because describing a sandwich to me not helpful yeah but the point again i'm trying to make here is that he has no idea of what you're supposed to describe. Yeah, I know. And We're... he has no ability to set a scene and he just nope. thinks you're supposed to describe something instead of like picking and choosing the details that you describe. No, but here's the thing. He doesn't describe anything. He merely makes a simple statement with almost no descriptive character at all. Yeah, it's just like then the thing happened. And then, even though there's a lot of passive voice too in this book, yeah, what is it with bad writers and passive voice making them think like it sounds better or something? Oh man, it's it like you should almost never use that shit. No, as far as I know. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not into it. Uh, this book, I oh man, actually, fuck, I forgot. Uh, we have to thank one of our. One of our terrible book club listeners for recommending this, actually. Really? I Shit. thought I found it on um, a list somewhere. I thought it was like a Huffington Post thing that I read. No, no. Um, Someone on Twitter recommended it. Shit. Um, I'm really sorry. Who I had heard was. about this book before then, and then we got reminded uh, about okay. it by this person on Twitter. But yeah. And then we were like, I guess we should fucking take a look. Yeah, thanks, mysterious Twitter for- person. Um, I will figure out who you are and thank you on the next episode because I can't remember right now you do it on text and twitter and facebook or something yeah, like that's that true. too um but yeah and other people have been recommending other stuff to us so you know we have a good list going of, of things we need to read but we'll get back uh, into the swing of things here in november we, um, oh we're not gonna try for another one this month maybe is there just dude, too much shit happening for us dude we have to, like music shit is taking over our lives yeah that's why, that's we've why been we haven't swallowed done, been done, by yeah. um music i had to go into the studio for a little bit that was only a week but like still no, preparing dude, for took, it that took like two weeks of your time overall and yeah preparing for it was more and then we're, we're both preparing doing cover sets for halloween and regular and we're preparing for a regular show so, um yeah and i my teaching job has more students now yeah and my my job is also busy right now I, um, um, I, I've become an actually busy person for the first time in my life, and it's weird for yeah, me. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the world. I'm of, used to uh, being like a fucking scum lord, just hedonist <laughs> that just does what I please during all hours of the day. Just hedonism bot. That's what I, I've described giggling myself. Giggling and eating grapes. Yeah, I've described myself as that to people to people that I've known, and they, they've agreed with me a little bit. I, I don't think you're anything like hedonism bot, but that's fine. I like to think I am. That's weird. Um, <laughs> I am a literal hedonist when it comes to some of my philosophies on life, so... Yeah, I guess. It, not totally to the point of, like, you know, just doing whatever, but... That's what in he- general, that's my hedonism. basic life philosophy is I'm going to die soon, better just have as much fun as I possibly fucking can. Yeah, well, that's fair Not enough. soon. I'm only in my, like, mid-twenties, so I got enough time, probably. Hopefully. I hope. Wow. Um, <laughs> you never know. What are you talking about? You're already dead. Oh, that's right. I'm You're a ghost. ghost. I'm sorry. Shit. Cover blown. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was one of the dumbest jokes you've ever attempted on the show. I'm Jesus. trying to be funnier, Paris. I know. I'm trying to... I'm, my improv chops, I'm trying to, like, loosen up here. Here's I, the thing. You I, shouldn't have to try. If it happens, it happens. That's the thing. But I need to practice... It. You do... You should practice being funnier. Like... No. I'm gonna, I just, be, I'm gonna be my own person. Okay, but I disagree. I can still be a funnier version of myself. Comedians don't just become like they're not just funny like that. They have to practice. Yeah, and, like, we're not own. comedians. I could be one if I tried. Uh, okay, if you want to suddenly have that goal in life, that's fine. I'm gonna be a sta- but I could mine. be funny in the style of pretty good comedians if I try really hard. Nothing is out of my reach if I just try hard enough. I, I don't say nothing, but. Many things. Well, I mean, I'll never drive a car, but... It's like, yeah, I mean, well, you could. I mean, I could. It's not recommended, but... You you could, but... It's definitely not recommended. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, tr- I'm actually making a conscious effort to, like, boost my comedy chops. Especially when it comes to this podcast. I feel like that's the role that I would fit in the best over here. And I've been... Tr- I did some work over the month to try and think about how to be funnier... And, like, I listened to some other stuff that we did to try and, like, pinpoint what exactly is funny about me in order to up the quality of the podcast. That's all. I don't know, man. I just think that this podcast is about us having conversations and our conversational chemistry. And I don't think it should be um, 
you know, artificially augmented in any way. I don't think it's we not should. artificial if I'm just making a practical effort to try. I want to be funnier anyway, mm. in general. So why not use this as my practice medium? Oh, whatever. Okay. I think I'm a pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Do whatever the fuck you want. I'm, uh, don't give I'm a shit. Reclined on a couch, uh, half asleep. I don't even right give now. a crap about your dreams, Chris. Do what you want. Yeah, yeah. At the end, of, like yeah. I give a. F- Fuck. Yeah, I'm actually, you know, bed. just uh, just kill yourself, and uh, I'll, I'll no, just I won't. take over the podcast. <laughs> I'm already a ghost. I can't die That's, again. I don't know. Maybe in your crazy world. It is crazy over here. Uh, um. So, yeah, Moon That's People. That's Moon People. I'm sorry. Like, there's not a lot of content in that book. I tried to milk everything I could out of it, but it's yeah. just a fucking... It's like a, it's not even like a big turd like I described it before. It's just like the little shit that you take like when you have like a really bad stomach ache, but then like nothing comes out except a couple farts. <laughs> I don't know. Has this never happened to you? No. Everybody poops, Paris. I, I understand that, <laughs> but what you're describing is unfamiliar to me. Okay, well sometimes you have like a really bad stomach ache and you're like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom really bad, and then you just sit on the toilet for twenty minutes. Like, what is this gonna happen what? or not? That's bizarre. It's not. I've I've commiserated with people about this problem i'm not alone oh okay <laughs> that's great i'm glad you have a support network for your <laughs> digestive problems i you know just it's I, these things come up in conversation sometimes I, I don't sure whatever in my conversations at least i suppose anyway that's moon people that aren't even from the moon or people <laughs> <laughs> and dale courtney who is not a child, unfortunately. So what are they really? They're from like another ga- – they're just other they're solar system people. Galaxy right? aliens. That's what this book should be called. Galaxy <laughs> aliens. <laughs> that sounds even dumber somehow. It would be more accurate. It would be more accurate, but like eh. – Can it get dumber than this? I don't think so. I don't know. I think this, this is definitely, the bottom okay, of the barrel. Okay, okay. Well, this versus Wild Animus. Which would you oh. rather read, Paris? Oh, I'd rather read this again. You would, Why would you rather oh, read this? Oh, in a heartbeat. It's short. Just it's shorter. simple. I don't have to think about it. I just filter the dumb through my brain, and it's amusing. It's, super, like I said, super short. No content, nothing I, to think about. You know, it's, I'd it's rather so read this sad so that times. I feel like we peaked really early. Like, I hope we didn't <laughs> peak super early with Wild Animus as, like, this fucking <laughs> king at the top of the mountain of just insufferable because we talk it about it all the is. time. It kind it's of just is. so fu- like we at the end of every episode I, I basically compare it back to Wild I know. Animus because that's that's I just want to know if we'll ever fucking top that. I'm sure we will eventually one day we'll come across the thing that completely liquefies our brains. Yeah, like it's the thing that will end the podcast. Um Yeah, the, the last one didn't kill us. It almost looked like it did. I'm sure people were distressed about us not being around for a month. Yes, yeah, yeah, sorry about that guys. You're just Sometimes it gets busy over here. I was hoping maybe we can get another one in October, do like a spooky thing because Halloween. But honestly, we don't have fucking maybe. time. Maybe. I mean, if oh God, it'd have to be something short again. I'm um, super busy the rest of this week. Yeah, me too. I have I'm no super life. busy the next week. And yep. then the week after that, I have that Halloween show. Yep. Yeah. We're uh, booked. We're both booked in our separate lives. It's nice to be weeks. busy, but some things have to slip. And I guess this is the thing that slipped. Yeah. But we're going to be back. You can't put us down that easy. I'm Easily. clawing my way back. Easily. <laughs> god damn. I'm just going to talk wronger and wronger. Oh my god, no. Worser and worser. Chris. Me tell you, Paris, how talk. You know what say I am. You stand under. Oh. Ow. How are you doing this? You know what me say. This is fucking horrifying. It's actually make. I'm having a physical reaction. Like I want to commit violence against you for speaking. This By way. night, listen, people. Oh Jesus, stop! We go away uh, for nows. I, Chris, this Paris. We see each other oh, times no. next. No. On terrible book club. <laughs>